Welcome, welcome to the Rick Helps Real Estate Show. Well, there's a survey that came out by Clever Real Estate a few months ago, and uh, they interviewed buyers and said, you know, if you just purchased a house, uh, how do you feel about it? And there's a large percentage of them. Uh, they surveyed about 920 Americans about their views of the home purchase. And then they interviewed people that are going to buy another 523 or 24 saying, you know, what have you learned from other people that have bought? And they said right here, we found that buyers stepping into the 2024 housing market have much to learn from the previous shoppers, the report stated. Wow. It said, even after navigating, check this out. Even after navigating the climate of higher mortgage rates and a dearth of available listings, 82% of recent buyers had regrets about their purchase. More than 40% of this group said they've struggled to make on-time mortgage payments. Yikes. That's a big number, my friends. Another key finding said that there was a mismatch between consumer negotiate expectations regarding home prices. People are planning to buy a home in the end of 2025, 2025 expect to pay nationally 483000 on average, but 52% of those who have purchased since the start of 23 have spent more than 500000 So there's an expectation that they're going to spend a certain amount, end up spending more. Now, there's a lot of reasons that this can happen. Sometimes there's just a house and a style that you want that, quite frankly, is not in your price range. And some people are saying, well, okay, I'm going to go ahead and stretch it so that I can get that style that I want. And they're regret regretting it. Sometimes what you're looking for is just not out there. And the agent goes, well, you know, you're trying to stay below five. But what you're looking at, and I've been sending you to searches and you've been looking as well, only seems to be available <coughs> above five. And that's how you get roped into that deal. The, the vast majority, 85% of these buyers also reported making compromises on their home purchase. And that's one right there. I was going to stay below 500, but now I'm above. Okay, it'll all work out. Although 48% of buyers wanted an affordable home, a whopping 37% bought a home that was more expensive than planned. That's the biggest deal. We see that all the time. If you don't want the house, you don't want the house. But sometimes you go, boy, those ones that are above my price range that I was looking at sure seem like a nice, nice home. 65% of these recent buyers also reporting making at least one concession to the seller, indicative of the seller's market that exists and saying that they agreed to make the purchase of the home as is. Now, I had a video come out on as is and you can still get out of it, even though if you say that you're not going to ask for repairs, you can still walk away from the house if there's a list of too many repairs. Uh, but maybe some buyers don't know that. It said, among this group, about one in four agreed their purchase their home as is. That's, that's, a, pretty, that's a pretty hefty number. Now, the other thing that came out, which is interesting, it says here, that the survey also delved into the use of real estate agents, noted that upcoming changes, very misunderstood upcoming changes, by the way, to the agent commission structures following the nationwide settlement of the NAR and several other major brokerage firms, roughly three quarters said that it's important to have an agent represent them. But half the buyer surveyed said they would forego representation due to the possibility of having to pay their agent's commission. Now, that's not a surprise to me because people are scraping every penny they got. And now they're saying, well, now I got to pay the commission on top of my closing costs. Well, I'm just not going to use an agent. I'm going to touch on that in a moment here. But it said buyers are understandably wary of the new commission model that would increase their upfront costs, it said. No kidding. Three and four survey responders said they're more likely to use an agent if they had a detailed breakdown of the services and costs. And 67% said they would prefer an a la carte real estate service. I'll show you the home for this fee. I'll write the contract for this fee. Is that where real estate's headed? Well, 67% of the people said, I'd kind of like to see that. So as we watch real estate wrestle through this, maybe that's something that'll, that'll show up. 
Well, one of the things that's really clear is that most buyers had no idea, A, how complicated the process was, how expensive it was, and they didn't stay within their budget. And now they're regretting it. Felt that the market was pretty brisk. They had to have a competitive offer. They jumped in and they're kind of kicking themselves a little bit. Now, talking about commissions, um, <clears throat> yes, it is in there that, uh, uh, that sellers are not required to offer buyer agent compensation. But I don't think you're going to see that quite swing the other way as fast as, as many think. We're starting to see some not offering a buyer commission, but we're seeing it being negotiated back in. Here's my contract. Uh, we would like you to, pre to present a buyer's agent brokerage commission as a part of this sale. And uh, for the most part, the sellers are doing that. Some sellers are choosing not to forego that option and offering anywhere from 2 to 3%, sometimes 1%. It's all over the board. So that's going to change a lot in August, and it's going to be confusing for a lot of people. But we don't want buyers to think, well, you 100% have to pay that commission because you don't. So they need to be educated on what's really going on in this market. I don't think it's going to change that much by the time the year finishes out. But I think it's going to be a tough summer. And so for buyers, the main thing is to make sure that you understand that you have to have a lot of reserves too, because one of the things that came out in the survey said that they didn't feel that sellers were disclosing the maintenance costs of the home as much as they should have. Well, that's your job. It's your job to find out how much it's going to cost to maintain that house. Now you can ask for the utility bills. You can ask how much it costs to maintain the pool. And for the most part, the seller will give you that information but they're not obligated. Now, as far as buying a house as is, I had a video come out about that that said, you know, sellers are not obligated to sell their house uh, and agree to all repairs. All homes in Arizona are sold as is. You don't even need to add that to your contract. What that means, simply put, is the sellers are not obligated to fix anything. You're not obligated to accept the house that's in a state of disrepair, but that's all a part of the negotiation process. So when you write an offer that says it's as is, is it really as is? Because if you get an inspection report that comes back and there's a ton of things that need to be fixed, you've agreed that you're not going to ask them to fix that. But keep in mind, you haven't contractually agreed that you're still going to buy the house. Let me repeat that. You have agreed not to ask them to fix things. You have not agreed that you're going to accept the house if the repair list is too long. It's always a negotiating point. We see that a lot. It said here, in addition, nearly 30% of research buyers were not represented by an agent. So 30% of the buyers went in there, they went in on their own. Now, did they overpay? Did they have too many fees? Did negotiations go wrong? Hard to tell. Some of it probably worked out just fine. But that's where buyers are feeling right now. And the people that are going to buy this year and next year are sitting back and watching this closely to see how things shake out. But anyway, if you have any questions, shoot me an email at rick, rickhelps.com. Take care.